Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm back today with another big update on the EIDL loan increases. New emails are starting to come out from the SBA, and these are not the initial emails to request the increase. These are now follow-up emails that are being sent back from the SBA asking for additional information. I just want to get you guys all caught up so you get yourselves prepared and ready to go out and get that loan increase. So share this video with everybody you know who is in the EIDL loan process. Whether they're in the loan process or even in the grant process, there's still a lot of good information contained within this video. So let's get you all caught up. Hello everybody, I'm Edward Builder. Welcome back for yet another video. I have, I have plenty of loyal subscribers out there that join me each and every day, so I just wanna say hello to all of you. And if you're joining me for the first time, Welcome. I know I get a lot of new subscribers every single day, but if you haven't yet subscribed, maybe consider it. I have some pretty great giveaways I do here on the channel. Uh, I have a lot of exciting news to talk about first. I want to talk about the targeted advanced grants. I'm happy to hear that everybody's getting the re-evaluation process started. So if you're in the targeted advanced grant world and you've been denied wrongfully, check out these videos right here to get yourselves a re-evaluation and get yourselves back into the approved status. Now, there are a ton of glitches associated to the Targeted Advanced Grant Program, and we have not forgotten about you. I'm going to have a, a big video here later today talking about all the glitches, so join me back here later today. But for now, just let me know in the comments what glitch you're stuck in to help us win this battle as well. So we're not done yet. We're still firing back, and we're still trying to get ourselves to a better place. <laughs> and of course, you can always swing by and check out my videos on PPP. There's so much happening over there as well. A lot of new changes going on with the program, so swing by and check them out. Here's a big change right here. No longer have to wait the eight weeks, so go check that video out. I'm gonna dive into the loan increases. Specifically, I wanna talk about what's going to happen next, all right, because you know, if you have not yet done so and you have not yet requested your loan increase, you can swing by the description right now and email COVID EIDL. Uh, increase request at sba.gov. I know I'm fumbling over that one. It, it's all in the description and everything you need to contain inside that initial email is contained there as well. Now don't send any additional information, only send the specific information that is inside that uh, first initial email because the next part is when they uh, assign it to a loan officer and they come back and they request more information for you. We're going to get into that part right now. Okay, let's switch over and start talking about that new email that's going out. I'm going to put it up on the screen right here. I'll summarize some of it, but you'll notice there's a different flavor on what they're asking for. They're no longer asking uh, how they asked for the targeted advanced grant process. They're now reversing it a little bit. I think they've been watching my channel. <laughs> Actually, I know they've been watching my channel. They message me on Instagram all the time telling me that they see my channel. So uh, and anyhow, <laughs> so instead of them pulling your 4506T, they are now asking you to go out and pull your 4506T. And primarily, it's because of the big major backlog and all of the errors in people that have never filled out a 4506T before. They want this resolved and have all the accurate documentation so they could execute this one time instead of many times. <laughs> so let's take a look at the email here. I have it up on the screen. Uh, it says they want you to include a complete copy, including all schedules of your 2019 filed federal tax return for the business. And here it says IRS tax form 4506-T, uh, the applicants, uh, sorry, for the application of the business. And the correct version of the form is found on the irs.gov website. And there it says some helpful tips, right? And these are the same helpful tips that are found in this video right here that I made, oh, I don't know, two weeks ago. <laughs> so I guess the IRS, I guess the SBA saw this here video and then made this here form. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to read all of this. I'll summarize this again, but it's telling you to make sure you're using the correct IRS form uh, primarily because you could go out right now and, and type into Google, I'd like to get my 4506T, and it directs you to a service that you're going to have to pay for to get that done instead of sending you to the irs.gov website. So use the link found in the email to go straight to the form. And then notice there, it says they do not want you to take a photograph of this. It has to be uh, signed and dated in ink or a digital e-signature, electronic signature, just a digital version of your handwritten signature. Uh, not to be taken as a photograph, but in PDF form, I'll give you a tip on how to do that to make sure that uh, you have the correct business entered on line six and that you hit 6C for a record of the account that basically checks everything inside that record of account. And last, of course, that the signatory box must be signed. 
Now, I know, I know what you might be thinking. How do I get a PDF copy of this if I did this manually and you want to still take a photograph of it? You could just go and download uh, from your smartphone. Just search PDF scanner on your phone. There's plenty of free ones out there. So if you like all the research I do here on the channel and you want to say thank you, the best way to do so is to smash the like button. Every time you smash the like button, YouTube recommends this video to more and more people who need to hear it. And you could also swing by the description right now and check out my crash courses on B&Bs and short-term rentals. Get into the game with as little as $50 in your pocket, earning an extra five to $10,000 found in my B&B crash course in the description. I'm going to talk about this other email here because this is a little bit different and it's primarily for partnerships and people that have LLCs or corporations. Uh, basically, it's an authorization that you are the person who can request the loan and that you have evidence of it. Um, they're requesting a statement that the board held a meeting with a board resolution document. And in that statement, they want an authorization that accepts the SBA loan for the specific loan amount and a statement designating the individual or individual's names that are authorized to receive that, that funding and be able to sign that documentation. So I don't recommend that you rush out and send information like this back, but just have yourself prepared in the event that you receive this and you're asking yourself, what is, exactly are they asking me for? It is basically a just an authorization letter that says, you held a board meeting, uh, everybody knows about this $100,000 loan increase, and you are the authorized person to go out and sign on that application to get this thing executed. So, and that's pretty simple, and it contains uh, some information, of course, around the business name, business title. So wait to get the email. Uh, it may be very specific to your particular situation. Now I wanna shift focus here just for a moment on the loans if you're out there applying for the loan increase because it's not talked about very much on YouTube or anywhere out there. And that is around collateral and hazard insurance, okay? So stick with me here for a minute because if you found yourself now receiving a Forex loan that is $25,000 or greater, um, that will require collateral and also hazard insurance for that collateral. I'll just touch on this here for a moment. The collateral will be signed in a UCC securities agreement, a UCC-1. There's a $100 filing fee, which is deducted from your overall loan taken at the, at the transfer. And this is a blanket lien on collateral. It applies to assets, inventory, equipment, and bank accounts. And essentially, you know, if you're out there as a sole proprietor and say you have some form of inventory or maybe you're driving trucks, it could apply to your vehicles as equipment. Um, it can really apply to anything that you've designated that is 100% use for your business. So keep that in mind and that you also have to have collateral insurance to protect it. Um, the collateral insurance or AKA hazard insurance means that, you know, if you're out driving trucks and you have, you know, some you know, series of trucks or whatever that may be that you have insurance for each truck. Or if you have a warehouse that you have some kind of fire insurance or flood insurance or some type of insurance that covers all of the inventory contained with inside of it. Same thing for if you're operating some type of business that you have some type of collateral insurance on your business to make sure that if some random occurred event like a fire, flood, uh, something like that were to happen, that all of the contents inside are covered because naturally you're going to be in a, a much worse financial position. You could default on your loan. And when they come to collect and find out everything's been, you know, waterlogged or through a fire or burned up or something, <laughs> they're going to be asking a lot of questions. All right. So make sure that you have hazard insurance. They will ask about this. I promise you they will ask about this. Okay. So hazard insurance is very important. If you need further assistance found outside my free content right here on YouTube, you could find me pinned in the top comment for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Just click that link and set up a phone call with me. That's also the best way if you ever wanted to get my email address. You can just fill out that intake form, send a little message, you don't have to pay for anything, and it, it connects both of our emails that way as well. So if you ever wanted to email me something, that's probably the best way to get it done if you don't want to go to Instagram. Uh, I am also on Instagram, but you could do it either way really. <laughs> Remember, I'm always looking for new partners and investors in my B&Bs and my short-term rentals, and it's probably a good time to take some of the stimulus money, pay yourselves, get the grants, and go out and change your futures. Right now, in the description, you could find Weeble, BlockFi, M1 Finance, and Robinhood. They're all giving away free stuff. Weeble's pretty awesome. They want to give you free stocks. Every time you click two buttons inside of Weeble and recommend it to your friends on Facebook, if they sign up, you get free stocks. I get about $2,000 every single month in free stocks. 
and I could keep them or I could trade them in or I could cash them in and take my money elsewhere and do whatever I want with it. So <laughs> check out Weevil in the description. They're pretty good. That's going to do it for today, folks. I wish you all the best and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.